Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and it's time for more Scuttlebutt. This week's game to keep you company while I gibber into your microphone is brought to you by Tier 7 American Heavy Cruiser USS New Orleans. This is a ship that I ought to love. I ought to love New Orleans. This is my birthplace. I was born in New Orleans, but I have never really gotten along with this ship. I sure as heck didn't get, didn't get along with her back when she was Tier 8. And after dropping her to Tier 7, she just never really felt all that amazing. But recently, I resold the entire American Heavy Cruiser line to do a regrind. And for the first time, I'm finding myself playing a noteworthy amount of New Orleans since they buffed her bow armor. Uh, which was done, I think, about five or six months ago. I can't remember. It's been a while now. But it's it's really, really improved uh, what you can get away with, the shenanigans you can get up to with this ship. And I have really been enjoying her a lot more than I thought possible. She's not as, still not as good as Baltimore, but that's hardly surprising. But she's not nearly as bad as I remember, and I really appreciate that about her. So enjoy the game. So let's talk about what's going on. It is patch day, but I got some other stuff that I want to hit first. Upcoming events. There are three big upcoming events that I want to highlight. Well, one, two events, but one's taking place over multiple weekends. The first is soon, almost a little less than two weeks now, on Sunday, the 25th of July, we are going to be, Zath and I are going to be uh, st streaming uh, the Verizon Warrior series, the qualification stage with the Wargaming guys. I, think, I assume we'll be over on the main channel. So what's happening is this is a charity tournament. Verizon, U.S., well, one of the big wire, U.S. communications companies. Um, Verizon, of course, has partnered with warships before did a big tournament for cash back in december now they're doing a big tournament for charity they're putting up a big pile of money and they're bringing in a bunch of players and those players are going to play for charity and and, and the players will win some prizes of course for doing well in the tournament but the real prize is all the charity money that will go to the various charities designated by the individual teams they're pulling together a player pool of about 500-ish players. Those players are going to get drafted into 32 teams, and that is what Zath and I are going to be bringing you guys right there on that Sunday, the 20th of July. We're going to be bringing you day one, the qualification stage of the Verizon Warriors series. Uh, tournament is going to be played at Tier 8 in 7v7. Um, carriers will be allowed a maximum of two capital ships per team, so you can take two battleships or one carrier or one battleship. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um... This is very similar to the format that we played uh, back in December when we did when they did the uh, the uh, uh, Verizon event for the, the big cash tournament uh, back at the end of last year, and that was a ton of fun to watch. Such great variety. Tier eight is a really really interesting place for competitive play these days. It's not nearly as boring and static as you might think. A lot of interesting ships, a lot of fun ship interactions. Always fascinated to see what teams bring to Tier eight games. So that is going to be on Sunday the twenty fifth. The following that same day. Literally the same day, and I'm trying to check on the times to make sure they don't conflict. Zath and I are also participating in uh, uh, what's called Team League. This is an event that's been running out of the EU. Some EU guys have organized this. Um, this is the second season of it. What they do is essentially they get 12 Warship streamers. So they've got myself, Zath, and Bogsy from here on NA. I guess Maltese Knight, technically, from here on NA. From the EU, you've got uh, Flambass. Oh, I guess Geishu's NA as well. So you've got Flambass, Satsbloke, TC for your Tiger's Den, Killer Bin, and they got Farah Zeleth to come out of retirement, for those of you that remember Farah Zeleth. Um, those 12 streamers are going to draft players into teams, and they're going to play a tournament the following weekend. That's the 31st of July and the 1st of August. So those days, we'll be streaming the tournament, and the weekend before, we should be streaming the draft. Uh, this is going to be 7v7 at Tier 10, one battleship per team, no carrier. Should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm curious to see. I, I, this will be my first time participating. They, they invited me to participate in the previous season, which was, I think, season one. We're in season two now. Um, but I couldn't, the schedule was terrible. I couldn't make it work. I had something else going on. I don't remember what it was now. But but when they came back this time, I looked at the calendar and I was like, yeah, let's do this. So that's going to be coming up here towards the end of July. And then in a third weekend of more Warships competitive action, the finals of the Verizon Warrior series. Of course, we're playing the qualifiers on the 25th of July. The finals are two weeks after that on Sunday, the 8th of August. Now, I don't know what Wargaming is going to be doing for any of that. Zath and I have not yet been contacted. I don't know what's going on for the stream, guys. I can't tell you. I just know that the event is happening, so just keep that on your calendar. I'm 100% positive they'll do something fun for that event just because, you know, that's what Wargaming does when they run one of these big events. They want people to tune in and watch. They'll be doing a drop mission or some giveaways. Or there'll be something. Just So just keep that on your calendar, okay? 
Um, today is patch day. 10.6 is here, bringing with the Dutch Cruiser pre-release. If you're looking for a little taste of uh, what you can expect out of the Dutch Cruisers, I did have a, a battle replay that went up this past Monday. So I'll put a, a link to that, put a little card up in the top of the video and a link down below. You can go scope that out if you're interested. Um, so Dutch Cruiser, you know, advanced release is here. You're going to have the ability to earn or find your way into getting the tier 5, 6, 7, I believe, and 8 ships. Um, the four was uh, basically already released if you were uh, if you were an Amazon Prime gaming uh, Prime gaming member. Basically, if you had Amazon Prime, you could get the tier four. I think that promo is over, but I don't know. It might still be available. And then um, the nine and ten are not part. I don't believe they're a part of this release. Probably won't be ready until the next patch. Wargaming typically has been releasing new lines and stages for a while. If you've played the game in the last year, you're used to this by now. Um, so that's coming. Um, there's a couple weeks of Clan Brawl coming up in this next patch cycle. One week at Tier 7, and then a week at Tier 6. That latter week at Tier 6 could be a good place to get some practice to try out ships you might be considering for the next season of Clan Battles, which has already been announced, is going to be at Tier 6. So keep an eye on that. Um, Division Stars are back. So this is really nice. If you guys have got uh, an active a robust clan community you want the chance to earn some rewards and earn some rewards for both you and your clan um check that out you basically you div up in clan divisions you know grab some clan mates go you know sail around blow things up and you have a chance to earn some you know crates and oil and all the rest of this stuff there's a whole slew of balance changes in this patch uh let's talk about the buffs first um GJ, um, yeah, GJ Merker and Felix Schultz in the new German Destroyer Bench, both getting small buffs to their stealth. Um, Fen Yang, Tier 8 Pan-Asian Premium that I just despise, is getting a long overdue buff to her main battery reload. I really hope this is not the last one of these, because she needs... They, they give her a two-tenths of a second buff to her 4.9 second main battery reload. And I'm like, all right, well, she needs about... She's about six more of those, and she'll be reasonable. So we'll see how far she gets with that. Um, they're buffing the range of Tier 7 Russian cruiser... Uh, Tektris cruiser Schurz and Tier 8 British uh, Battleship Monarch. Uh, and the Turtraverse of Tier 6 Battleship... Uh, tier 6 British Battleship Queen Elizabeth is getting a buff. They're bringing her Turtraverse in line with that of her premium sister ship, which is HMS Warspite. Now, there are some nerfs in this mix as well. They're nerfing the main battery reloads of a lot of the middle-tier British light cruisers. That's Leander, Fiji, and Edinburgh. I'm not happy about this, but I get it. These are really strong ships. Fiji and Edinburgh in particular, I totally get. Leander's, I don't get. Leander only has eight barrels. Her reload is... Not, I mean, her DPM is already not that amazing. Like, Lander's a good ship, but, like, DPM is not really what she does. Um, I'm a little surprised at this one. The one that really floors me is they're nerfing the gun reload on Tier 7 German destroyer Leberdeck Moss. Leberdeck Moss is already not a very good des destroyer, period. Much less the fact... I mean, she's highly detectable at Tier 7, so she's constantly up-tiered into games with, with ships that have way better detection, and they're going to nerf her gun reload? I don't understand this one at all. That doesn't make any sense. Um... Tier 7 British Destroyer Jervis getting a small nerf to her stealth. I mean, okay, I think full I think a full stealth rate Jervis is like 6-1 or 6-2. Like, it's not bad, but it's not it's not amazing. I don't know, we'll see where it lands. Um, and then the radar duration of Tier 8 American Cruiser Baltimore getting dropped by 10%, going from 30 seconds to 27 seconds. And then once again, Tier 6 Italian battleship Andrea Doria getting a buff to her SAP shell damage. That's about the second one of those in a row that she's received. We talked about this back at the time, right? The Italian battleships always felt like they were being tested with on a very short leash. Like, they just weren't quite ready to to, um, to, to to unleash SAP into the wild. And I think that's, uh, hopefully, dear God, I hope it's not the last buff we see to the Italian battleships. I'm currently on the Tier 8 ship, and Vittorio Veneto is absolutely a miserable, utterly miserable experience driving that ship. And I love Roma, and Veneto is just awful. Ugh. Anyway, um... Probably the only other thing that I really want to talk about, and I haven't made the separate video on this, I considered it, but ultimately discarded the idea, was this whole mess with Yukon, right? If you've been paying attention, you know that HMCS Yukon recently released, I've got a video here on the channel, um, had a whole bunch of drama around it because apparently along the way, um, fellow North American community contributor uh, Little White Mouse and one of her longtime collaborators, that's uh, Chobitsu, were, are both Canadian and they were invited to participate in and help Wargaming kind of flesh out some ideas and some concepts for the ships and maybe maybe do some work on skins or a camouflage or something like this. And then somewhere along the way, typical to Wargaming's internal processes, all of that got discarded, thrown away, ignored, never heard. I don't know what the deal is. Wargaming probably doesn't even know what the deal is. And essentially that was all just discarded. It was all just a big giant waste of their time. 18 months, right? A big waste of 18 months of their time off and on. I was really 
Mouse said something about this yesterday on the NA forums, and I'll put a, three, a, a, a link to the thread down below if you really want to go peruse the whole thing. Um, she basically said, you know, thank you to everybody who supported her in this. You know, I've I'm, I'm been a longtime supporter of Mouse. Many other CCs kind of spoke up like, this treatment is not okay. And some of it is, is because she's one of us, right? She is a contributor. Nobody wants to see wargaming, you know, kind of crap all over us. But the other thing is, for God's sakes, this is Mouse, right? She does... She does work that the devs themselves don't seem to do half the time. How many other players take the, the time to contribute, to, 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 to take a ship into a training room to verify that the stated turning radius We've on the ship in the port is the actual turning radius? And then they do it for literally like every ship in the game and then send a list back to the developers of, by the way, guys, here's where you screwed up. Here's all the ships that are wrong. That's just one mini example of some of the stuff that she's done over the years. Um... So yeah, watching them kind of run trample over here, it just felt awful. And she's been struggling with it, understandably so. Um, and I guess the only thing I can really say about this is it's 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 depressing to watch from the outside, but I'm not surprised, right? I've I've worked closely enough with wargaming off and on for a variety of time, right? Uh, three or four years. I mean, I've been a CC for three years, but I was doing. Well, I guess that, got, that, co that about coincides with when I got sucked into King of the Sea admin stuff. But with King of the Sea admin stuff, I was doing a lot of close collaboration with the, at the time, the, the, the guys running the, the, the kind of competitive scene here on WGNA, and that was Radar X and Kami Samurai. And I can't count the number of times that I had a conversation with Radar, and I had heard something as a, as a King of the Sea admin talking to the EU admin team that they had heard from Conway, right, who run, basically is, is was Radar's counterpart in the EU, I knew stuff that Radar didn't know because Wargaming's internal communication, they don't talk to each other. Um, and that happened frequently. And I know Radar tried to improve it, and it, it didn't improve. Um, when when Hapa joined the team, Hapa Fodder, I got to know him a little bit. We talked about competitive stuff. I worked with him for, again, another year and a half doing competitive casts and plays and all this stuff. And the same problem still existed. Literally, for, so for three years, right? Like... Oh, there's just all these internal communication problems. It's like left and hand don't talk to right hand. NA office don't talk to EU office. I don't know what, I don't know if anybody talks to the RU office. Like it just, I don't understand. I just don't understand how it's, I, I kind of I went on a spiel on this on stream a, a while back, but it's, and, and I think that video goes up today. So if you watch this, this the, the, the uh, Scoonie video that's coming out today, you'll hear some of this. But essentially, it's like, I've worked for global companies, guys. I've worked with global clients. Everybody I have ever known in my life does this better than you. You have to do better. You have to do better if you're going to be a global company. It's that simple. I just don't understand why it's so complicated. I will say that I understand that communication is hard. You have to put a focus on it, right? It's something that you have to, to drill into people. This is important. All of these other people who may not sit in the same office as you are stakeholders in this decision. You have to keep them informed. But that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It hasn't been happening, and God only knows if it's going to start happening. We'll see. But anyways, it's been a mess. I'm not surprised. I feel bad for Mouse. There's been a small resolution. At least they're going to get here on into the game. That'll be nice. And and kudos to Wargaming for at least kind of trying to make it right. But I do feel like Mouse says it best in her last post in the, in the, in the forum thread where she basically is like, this didn't have to happen, right? None of this had to happen. And uh, and here we are. Anyway, guys, it's patch day. Get out there and enjoy. Come by the stream tonight. I will be doing a patch day stream. Um, otherwise, hope to see you at one of the upcoming tournament streams. You guys, be safe. Wash your hands. I'll catch you later.